it's time for another Hex front-end component video. Today we will be looking at five different components that can help you speed up the setup of your UI, customize how you see the data, or just bring you some more information that you would be otherwise searching through the Home Assistant. We'll start in a couple of seconds. One of the biggest issues for all of the Home Assistant users is creating UI. It can be really a long-term task, because you create something, then you redo it, then you find a much better HACS alternatives to the ones available in Home Assistant, so you just work, 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 and never finish on it. And also, if you have a lot of entities, and this system, my main system, has 3826 entities, it can be a pain to group everything, to sort everything out, to know what the lights are, what the switches are, what the covers are, what areas you have, etc. Well, there is actually one nice front-end component in HACS or Hacks that can help you with that. Let's start with that one. Ali and Khan made this Mushroom Strategy card. And if you do like the card, don't forget to give it a star, because it is the simplest way of saying thanks. This card is a card that will create your complete dashboard. But it's also, I would call it like that, an experiment. It will show you what you can do with your UI, but I would use that as a starting point. There is one pitfall or downside of this, and that is that you cannot simply customize it. But let's first install it, let's look at it, and let's talk about customization. Plus on Explore and Download, and type Mushroom. And you must install auto-generating Mushroom dashboard strategy. Before you install that one, you should also make sure that you have Mushroom available or installed on your system and also MiniGraph card. We have Mushroom already installed and MiniGraph card is also installed. Click, select download. At the time of the recording, version 1.0.1 .1 is the latest available version. And click on download. Reload. And the front end component should now be active. We need to do a couple of more things. Copy this text here, strategy type with empty view. And then let's go to settings, dashboards, add dashboard, call it mushroom strategy, add an icon, create, let's click on it, three dots, edit dashboard, start with an empty dashboard, take control. Once again, three dots, a row configuration editor, and replace everything with the code we just copied, and click on save. And this is how your dashboard may look like. It has created auto dashboard. We have home one with the areas, information, greeting, weather condition, total of lights, available total of switches that are turned on, etc. We have lights here with specific lights, all the lights that are available. Fans, I have none. Covers, switches, climate cards or climate entities, and cameras. But yeah, there may be a lot of entities or devices that you do not want to see on those dashboards. There is a way on how to hide them. Left click and hold. And on this device, click on cogwheel and set this visible switch to false or disabled. Update. And the device is gone. Actually, it's still not gone, but if we refresh the page, device will be gone. But there is also option, for example, if you have one device or one entity in multiple cards, to display it in one card and then do not display it on the other card. For that, you have to use advanced card options mode. And this is done by going to three dots, edit dashboard, and here under type, add options, and card underscore options. I do recommend that you go through documentation and look on those advanced settings. We will not be covering them through this video. But the idea is, for example, that you can use card options to show some devices or hide other devices on specific cards. But let's look at some more simpler customizations that you can do. For example, we can play with the titles, icons, etc. Let's click on three dots. Remember that we have balcony here, edit dashboard, and I will copy the example, but change it to match my setup, click save, and now we have customized area called balcony. Instead of balcony, here we now have 
area called open balcony with the green sofa icon. This is a very easy and nice way to automatically create cards or full dashboards for your setup. But there is also downfall. Unfortunately, you cannot edit the cards, remove, play with them here. Everything that you need to customize or everything that you want to customize, you have to do through the YAML code directly for each specific entity, card type, card, etc. So yeah, on one side you gain something, but on the other side you do lose a bit of customization. Again, go through documentation, there are a lot of other things that you can do, more advanced things than just changing the icon color. This card that I will show you now is a great card if you already are using Home Assistant internal integration called Timer. If you don't know what Timer is or that Timer exists in Home Assistant, check out the video I've created a long time ago, actually three years ago, when still we didn't have helpers inside the UI. At that time you had to create each and every Timer through the YAML. This way of creating timers is still available in Home Assistant, but you can now also create them via the UI helpers. First, let's create a dummy helper. Let's go to Settings, Integrations, Helpers, Create Helper, select Timer. We name it, for example, Recording. We will use Microphone. And let's say that this timer is 30 minutes. You have option to use Restore. If you tick this box and allow restore, what it means, it means that it will retain the timer state at the time of the Home Assistant restart. So if the timer was on countdown, it will not reset after the Home Assistant has rebooted, instead it will continue where it left off. So I do recommend that you use restore unless you actually want to reset timers each time Home Assistant restarts. Let's go to our overview, hacks. And let's add here timers. The only way or one of the ways you could do that currently is to create an entity card and then list timers here. If the timers would be triggered, we would have simple countdowns like this, but we want to have fancy or nice counters. So there is a HACS frontend component just for that. Let's go to HACS, frontend, type in timer and select timer bar card. There is also option to use flip down timer cards, but I will leave that one for future hacks videos. And this is how timers can look. Let's click on download. Latest version at the time of the recording is version 1.29.1. Download and reload. If we check the documentation, there are a lot of styles that you can implement or push to your timer card. It all depends on your usage, how you want it to look, does it match your setup, etc. There is also a mushroom style. The simplest way, of course, is to click three dots, edit dashboard, add card, time card, add entities. It can be one or multiple, timer recording. And then we can also add some modifications. For example, this will create a simple card that will change the icon and also the color of the bar depending on the percentage where the bar is or what the timer is currently running out. Of course, on a longer timer such as this one, you may not see the difference, but if we replace it, for example, with a dishwasher, which is much shorter, you see that the bar is currently red because the time is running out. We only have 40 seconds left. You can further customize it. For example, edit, add layout, full row. And now we can see full row without the text. But we can further customize it. Text width zero pixel. That means that we don't even have time visible in terms of seconds, minutes or hours, just the bar itself. Let's click save. Let's start it once again. And as you can see, we only have bar progress bar. There are a lot of other things that you can do with this timer card. I even haven't scratched the surface. For example, we can add tap action. That means that we do not even have to use internal timers inside Home Assistant. Instead of that, we can create our own timers with scripts or automations. For more information, go to the repository where you can read the documentation. And by the way, if you're there, if you like this hex component, don't forget to start it. So we can thank Rianadon for this awesome hex contribution. But as I mentioned, go to the documentation page and read what you can do with this card. I didn't even scratch a surface of what this card can do. It all depends on your creativity, on your needs 
and there are a lot of examples, cases, use cases that are written and documented here. So go check it out. Okay, but time for our next component. Let's once again go to frontend, explore, and type in hourly weather cards. We all know that Home Assistant brought us some changes in the version 2023.9, and this is how we handle hourly weather. No matter if you're using older version or newer version of Home Assistant, you can still use this card, and it looks much nicer than any other available card inside Home Assistant for your next whatever hours weather forecast. So let's start with clicking download, download. At the time of the recording, the latest version, not beta, is 5.3.0 and reload. But what is great about this component is that we can simply add it by using Visual Editor. Click on Add Card, Hourly, and here we have to select first entity. You have to know which entity supports hourly weather. You can give it a name. You can select number of segments. This one has 12 for 12 hours. It can be lower number or higher number. But remember that granularity also makes the text smaller bigger and it may or may not show all the data from first glance. We have number of forecast segments to offset. For example, you don't want to see the weather for next two hours. You have number of forecast segments to space, time and temperature labels. It is currently every two hours. You can show icons instead of the text. You can show speed. And you can also show dates. If available, you can also toggle the precipitation and probability for rain and click save. If you do install and like the component or this card, click on star to thank Jonathan for creating such an awesome hourly forecast card. While we are already talking about weather, what about nice weather radar map? Yes, there is option for that too. Let's go to HACS. Frontend, Explore, type here Weather and select Weather Radar Card. Click on Download. The version at the time of the recording is version 2.1.0. Download and Reload. And that's it. The great thing about this component is that you can use UI. And it's great because while it's also not that hard to use YAML, it has a lot of options. So let's add it to our Lovelace. Overview, Hex three dots, dashboard, add card, and you can either type weather or just search for it down in the list of all the available cards. It is custom weather radar card. Okay, a lot of options. Let us quickly go through each one of them. Card title, of course, is title of the map. You can avoid it and get a bit more real estate available for the satellite image itself. Data source you can leave as is, and that is the default or original one, but you can also go for Universal Blue, Titan, the Weather Channel Style, Meteor Red, Nexrad, Rainbow, and Dark Sky. Let's go back to Original. Then you can also play with the map style. I think there are four versions. We have Light, which is this one here. We have Voyager, which... I don't know what is the difference. We have satellite and we have dark. If you're not satisfied with how zoom in or out this looks, you can play with either level four, which is the furthest one available, or level nine or level even 10, which zooms in a lot. I'll put it at level eight. Location data is pulled from your home assistant setup. So if you haven't specified your home assistant installation location, latitude and longitude, you will have to provide it here. Also, there are two options or two latitudes and two longitudes. One latitude and longitude is used for map center. It will center the map based on that coordinate. But for example, if you have a large country map, you have your country centered on the map, maybe your location is somewhere else than the center. Then you can use that marker latitude and longitude to mark your location, which is really an awesome idea to include in this component. Next, we can define frame count. Frame count is this bar here. I think the default value is 10. It means that it will create clip out of how many frame counts you specified. It can be 5, 
for a very short, brief clip, or let's say 20 for a clip that has a bit more data. You have option to use frame delay and restart delay. Restart delay will just delay restart when it reaches the end of the clip cycle. Plus you have also a lot of toggles. Static map. Since this map can be moved around, you can specify that this is a static map and you will not be able to drag it around. Then you can show a marker on the map. You can show scale. Show option to zoom in and zoom out. Show playback option. Show range. Square the map. Show extra labels on the map or show recenter button. This is handy if you are not using static map. Let's click save. And now we have a nice customized weather satellite images or clip inside our home assistant. If you do like this card, don't forget to give it a star to thank Jonathan for creating such an awesome Hex front-end component. And the last card is very simple, very sweet, but it can help you, especially if you are into that data. It's a, once again, HCS front-end, plus to explore and download and type log and download logbook card. Logbook card allows you to get data from your logboot home assistant logbook in a nice visual form. It allows you to see when the event started, when it finished and how long the event was going on for. Click on download. At the time of the recording, version 1.13.1 was the latest version. Download and reload. So for what you can use? For a lot of things. For example, I myself would use it for the front door to see when it was open, how long it was open and when it was closed. Or you can use it for your TV to see how long the TV was on or in whatever state it was. Let's add it to our UI. Hex, three dots, edit dashboard, add card, select logbook card. And in the UI, you can of course customize everything. First, select an entity. It can be whatever you want to add. For example, let's use this motion sensor. You can change the title, how many days of history you want to see. One, for example, maximum number of items. Since this is a very long list, I can say I want to see only seven items in the list. When there is no event, no event in log. If you want to create a collapsible list, for example, you only have three events visible, the rest four will be collapsible down here. Date format, the list can be ascending or descending, and you also can customize what you want to see. Display state, display duration, start date, end date, display icon, you can use display separator to have a line that separates each of the event, and custom logs, if custom logs are available. Let's save and you have a really nice card that can show you all the events that you would normally see in a logbook, but in much nicer and presentable way. And I think that this card is a really nice way to wrap up this video. But before we wrap up, let's check also one additional thing. And that is repository, because if you do like this log card, go there, star, to say thanks to author of this component, Julian Roy. Thanks, Roytov. But of course, when you are already there, check out the documentation, because it will tell you what else you can do with what you can play, what each of the items, attributes or settings means and how you can further customize your component. And this is it for yet another Hex Frontend Components video. I hope that you did find this video useful. I have a bunch more stored in my list that I will cover in future videos. Don't forget for each of those components, as I wanted to keep this video short, although I can never ever make a video that is very short, I skipped through a lot of things. So check out the documentation for each of the components that we've seen here to learn how you can further customize them and work better for your own setup. But also let me take this opportunity to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you for all of your support. And let me also thank each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or commented on my videos. I really do appreciate all of your interactions. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. But you can also do super thanks and I will be, as always, super thank you for all of your support. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.